Dow Jones down 300 points after strong jobs report. So there's a good jobs report. Why a strong jobs report is actually bad news for investors. <laughs> Stocks shudder after a surprisingly strong jobs report. Why is a strong jobs report actually bad for investors? Wait, is it because they're parasites? <laughs> Hey, I got a headline for you. Why penicillin is actually bad news for bacterial infection. <laughs> Watch this. This is crazy. It's a good catch by this guy. And uh, just watch this. Yeah. Slogging. Slogging for the first six months. More slogging. Yes, Joe. Thank you for having me. And good morning, everyone. I do think it will be a slog for the first half, certainly, of 23. So people who are coming out of 22 with that exhaustion you were mentioning um, should get ready for some more. We think it's going to be a slog for the Fed. We think it's going to be a slog for the markets. You know, Carol mentioned the consumer. The consumer is just really still very strong. They have cash balances at the banks that are 30 percent above where they were pre-pandemic. Even when you look at the lower income cohort, they're still 12 to 15 percent above where they were pre-pandemic. So they have cash to spend. They've certainly demonstrated a desire to spend. We're seeing that. What they're spending on is changing, and they're moving more to experiences than goods, but they're spending. And they have confidence to spend because the jobs market is about as good as we've seen in the last 40 or 50 years. So they have a job, and they have confidence that they can get another job if they need to. So that's a really tough nut for the Fed to crack when the U.S. consumer is 70% of the economy. And so we think this is going to take time. And this is going to be a real slog for the next eight to nine months. Jeez. Yes, the market is a discounting mechanism, and it will look forward. But we're not close to cutting. We're not close to pivot yet. And right now, the market thinks we cut in November, and that's just too soon. <laughs> wow, I knew it was the greedy consumers and their constant need for food and energy causing all these problems. <laughs> it's called wageflation, and it should be a crime. <laughs> hey, maybe Wall Street should do a, an Occupy Poor People shit protest, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's surreal. This is what he says. He says it's surreal to watch financial news talk about regular people having money to spend and job security as a negative thing. It's going to create a slog. Oh no, it's a slog. A slog. That's what she. What is that? Me. When you're not moving up as much as you want to be. I guess when you're not raping the consumer. Oh, you're exhausted from what? Not working and <laughs> you just invest in stuff. <laughs> If you, I like what he says. He goes, if you ever needed convincing that the health of the economy is a conspiracy against working people, watch this clip from CNBC that just aired. That is amazing. They're outright saying it. They're saying the consumer it. end, it's supply oh. side and not. <laughs> oh, they, they got money. They got money in a bank. 30% more than they had, which by oh. also was not enough. And these assholes are, are sure they can get another job. What percentage of these dickheads have more than they had in their bank accounts since the pandemic? Right. By the way? Uh, that's exactly right. All right. Uh, that's it for today. I think. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I just need an outro from you. So I need a, a regular blue screen. Oh, OK. Pretty please. Oh, wait, there's more to this. Oh, there I'm is. Sorry. Never mind. My favorite. I'm sorry. My favorite show is how she keeps referring to U.S. worker citizens as they, them, and not us or we. <laughs> well, she's talking to investors. It's a separate class, yes. of course. Yes. Here goes another one. Lower income cohorts. She's never <laughs> met a working class person. Mm. <laughs> the workforce must be a, as precarious as possible for the racket to work. This is why they oppose socialized health care, public education, pensions, and anything else that would give working people a better life. Exactly right. Everybody, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles in January and February in Los Angeles. And then we're going to Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets and become a premium member while you're there.